Hey guys, Pastor Jürgen here. I'm so glad you're tuning into one of our powerful messages that is guaranteed to absolutely elevate your life to another level. At Awaken, we only want to preach fresh, real, powerful to help you grow stronger in your walk with God, develop your faith so you can take more territory. I'm praying that God blesses you and enriches your soul as you listen to this amazing word from God. God bless you. Something that's really cool, and he may not know this, but Pastor Michael actually unlocked the prophetic when he was service leading. When Pastor Michael was talking about emerge speak, he didn't say it like Rex Crane says it. But I want you to know from what your pastor said was to speak life into areas that needed, to speak hope in areas that needed, to learn to control your tongue as the great weapon that it is. And that the basis of, of his story is to speak hope, to speak faith, to speak love, but really is to teach the men and the women of this house how to be overcomers in this life. And so tonight, I gotta tell you, I got a Celsius. I'm coming in hot after Emerge. Changed my message to preach it here tonight, and I believe this with all my heart. In every, in every scenario and circumstance, we have an opportunity to hear from God. You get to take home with you exactly what you want. You get to leave inspired. You get to leave full of faith. You get to leave. However you want to leave this room tonight, you can leave. And tonight, what I hope to do is to help you understand how you've been wired in the area of overcoming. The title of my message tonight is o The Overcoming, The Never-Ending Story. Maybe you're a new Christian, maybe you've been a Christian for a long time, but tonight I wanna to pose to you that you and I have been wired to live our life a certain way. We've been wired to live our life at a certain level. We've been wired to live our life seeing the way that God has meant us to be. And if you really boil it down, if you really dial it down, the life of every single believer is to be that of an overcomer. God wants to get you over the things that are under you so that you can be, oh, excuse me, God wants to get you under the things that he wants over you so that you can get over the things that he wants under you. Let me explain to you. God wants you to be under leadership that teaches you to pray. God wants you to be under leadership that will disciple you. God wants you to be under a house that will put faith and hope in your heart so that you can live your life a certain way. Those are the things that he wants over you so that so that you can be over the things that he wants under you. Come on, addiction needs to be under you. Depression needs to be under you. Hopelessness needs to be under you. And in this church, we will teach you how to be a believer, how to be an overcomer in this life. Are there any overcomers in the room tonight? Come on. It's really funny, I came home from Emerge and I feel like I heard, you know, kind of the stereotypical, like, God, you know, ladies, when your man gets home, just like let him process, don't ask him a thousand questions. I feel like I came in exactly the opposite. My poor wife, I was chewing her ear off. I must have started like three new ministries that night, texting people till the middle of the day. I came home from Emerge fired up and the real theme that I got from Emerge is that there are things in my life that I need to look at from a different perspective. There are things in my life that, that I've overcome and that I'm overcoming and then there's things in my future that I know that I need to overcome. Christian mentioned it, I got a little baby emerge man on the way, he's due here in May. If you're praying for me, if you're praying for my baby, just pray that he looks like my wife but acts like me. We'll be solid, we'll be golden. Emerge was so special because we saw dudes overcome things. They overcame things physically. They overcame things mentally. They overcame things emotionally. Come on, I saw some of you crying. It's all good. I'm right there with you. But more, more importantly and more powerfully is we begin to learn to overcome things spiritually. And that's where the real business and the real work of being a Christian comes into play. And the reason that we have to overcome as men and as families and believers is because we're leading families that we have to show what it looks like to overcome. We're leading in businesses where we have to show them, hey, this is the pace that I set because I'm a believer. Anything in my way, listen, it's not a problem to me because I have the spirit and the mind and the wiring of an overcomer in this life. And you know, the, the truth is, is that every story or movie that matters or is halfway decent is the tale of an overcomer. I think about Lion King, right? Young Simba had to overcome the shame and the guilt that he felt for thinking that his father's death was his own. He had to overcome the, the, the impossibility of who he was really meant to be. I'm meant to be a king? He had to overcome that in his old world. He had to overcome some tyranny. Come on, we're some overcomers of tyranny in this place. He had to overcome a great evil in his land. Another great movie, and hopefully you've watched this, The Gladiator, for sure. 
one of the greatest movies of all time, but he overcame injustice. He overcame being put from the highest of rank to the lowest of slaves. He had to overcome something. You know what, what makes that movie good is the ending when he stabs and kills Commodus. When he kills that dude, I'm like, yes, like this is the story of an overcomer. My name is Maximus Decimus Meridius, commander of the armies of the north, general of the Felix Legions, loyal servant to Marcus Aurelius, husband of a murdered wife, father to a murdered son, and I will have my vengeance in this life or the next. <laughs> He's an overcomer. That's what makes these tales and these stories worthwhile. So now I wonder how many of us are living a life and creating a story of overcoming that is worthwhile. And tonight I want to pose to you that there are three elements or three time cycles that you and I are meant to, to live in. It's so interesting that God loves to work in the threes. Ready for some examples? Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. They all work together. There's three of them. Okay, how about mind, body, and soul? Okay, three things that work together. The, the, the stoplight scenario, go, speed up, and stop, right? These things work. <laughs> they work together. I did a poll on my Instagram the other day. What does the yellow light mean to you? Slow down or speed up? My people, they all said speed up. It's so true. It's so true. But God loves to work in these three things. And so tonight I want to pose to you that this journey of overcoming is meant to operate and to be existent in three places at once. Past, present, and future. You and I are always to meant to look back at what are the things that God has delivered us from? What is the thing that we have victory over? What is the thing that we have put to death in our time that we have overcome? Secondly, what is the thing that right now I'm in the process of overcoming? God is helping me as I'm processing and I'm becoming this overcomer. And lastly, for the future, what are the things that I know in my life that are ahead of me, that are in the path that God has set for me, that sooner or later I will be confronted with, and I have to decide, am I going to overcome or am I going to be overcome? We're meant to operate in these three cycles. Make sense? Let me find where I'm at really quickly. Okay, if you're taking notes tonight, which I encourage, the first point I would have for you, and I'm not really a points preacher, but for some reason, points happen tonight, so we'll just go with it. <laughs> Number one is, what have I overcome? This is focusing on the past. The Bible says this in 1 John 5, 5, who is he who overcomes the world? But he who believes that Jesus is the Son of God. Anybody in this room believe that Jesus is the Son of God? Good. That means that inside of you, you have the DNA of an overcomer. All that Jesus came to do on the earth was to overcome, to overcome sin, to overcome death, to overcome the grave, to overcome religious people, to overcome is why Jesus was sent to the earth. And when you become a Christian, you automatically get involved and you automatically get the reward, you automatically get the benefit of all that Jesus has overcome. All of his benefits, all of his rewards, all of his forgiveness. And so the Christian definition of an overcomer, this is the definition of a normal overcomer, it says a person who overcomes. Wow, <laughs> really deep, really spiritual. No, it's one who succeeds in dealing with or gaining control of some problem or difficulty or a person who prevails in spite of opposition, difficulty, and weakness. Come on, overcoming doesn't matter if there ain't something you have to overcome. Overcoming doesn't matter unless there's a battle to fight. Overcoming doesn't matter unless there's something that's stopping or slowing you down from what God has always meant your life and my life to be. Can I get a yeehaw? yeehaw. Perfect. In order to reignite the overcomer fire in you, which is looking back at the past, okay, we're going to remember past, present, and future. We're going to focus on the past. In order to reignite the overcomer fire in you, it is good and right to reflect on the things that you have already overcome in your walk with Christ, the things that you've already overcome in your life, to recall the things, listen to this, that have been overcome for you. Maybe it's something that you didn't have the power to overcome yourself, but by the mighty hand of God, by his power, by his presence, by his spirit, came in and Jesus Christ wins the battle that you could not have won by yourself. He is the great overcomer. It's good to remember what is the thing that I put to death. You know, the interesting thing about grave sites is you're only go, meant to go visit them when you want to remember. I pray if I ever have a grave site that it says Sterling, the overcomer. I want my life to be a story of what did he overcome? What did he defeat in his time? You know, the cool thing about the, the burden burning is no matter how hard you tried, it's, it's impossible, I looked it up. No matter how hard you try, you cannot put that ash back together into a two by four. 
It has been signed, sealed, and delivered. What is the thing in your life that you have overcome by the power of God? What is the thing that you need to remember again that maybe you've gotten too comfortable with? Yeah, 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 I used to deal with that in the past, but when was the last time that you went and said, God, thank you for making me an overcomer. Thank you for making that a thing in my past. Thank you for making that something that's in my history and no longer in my story. My family is different because of it. When you have overcome, what you have overcome determines who you are. And what you have overcome will determine who you will be. Come on, it's writing a story. I want my life story overcame, 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 overcame. No matter how hard the devil fights you, he cannot revoke the victory that Jesus won on your behalf. The epitome of a believer is one who overcomes. The Bible says this. It's in Revelation eleven twelve, I believe. And it says, they overcame him by the blood of the lamb and the word of their testimony. They did not love their lives to the death. Listen, strength doesn't come from what you think you can do. It comes from overcoming the thing that you didn't think you can do. Let me say this again. Let me see if this works. Strength, strength does not come from overcoming the thing that it was easy for you to overcome. It comes from overcoming the thing that was difficult for you to overcome. One day you will tell a story of what you overcame, and will it be worthwhile? And will the story of what you overcame, will it become a survival guide for the people that you're leading? Will it become a survival guide for the people in your sphere? Will it become a survival guide for the people that you are doing life with? Listen, that's what I love, the power of testimony. Look, you're going through the same thing that I went through, but by the blood of Jesus, I have overcome. I beat that thing, I put it to death, and it no longer has a grip on my life. Amen? Okay, let's jump into the present. Number two, what I am overcoming This is focusing on the here and now. And here's a pro tip for you. Overcoming can't be all done at once. There are moments where by the supernatural power of God, boom, things are broken off of you. But the truth is, is that in this life as a believer, overcoming is a process. Amen? Amen. Let me break it down to you this way. On both sides of my wife and I's family, on both sides, there's been divorce that's ran rampant. Both of our parents, excuse me, have been divorced And both sides of our family have dealt with generational addictions to alcohol, okay? Alcohol, alcoholism on both sides. So my wife and I, because we're under leadership that helps us see, we're under understanding, hey, we're meant to overcome this thing. Her and I right now are in the process of overcoming divorce in our family. We're in the process of overcoming alcoholism in our family. We are consciously aware of what is the thing right now in our lives that we are overcoming in our world, Today, what's the thing in your life that you are currently overcoming? Listen, are you engaged in a battle or are you on the sideline? Are you in it to win it or are you not there? Listen, what you do matters to your future and to your family. It's affecting our lineage. My legacy, I'm telling you, there's something powerful. My wife sit together and talk about how beautiful it is that that divorce thing ends with us. I'm gonna be married to her till Jesus come home or you put me in the grave. That's gonna happen. Yeah, that's a good thing to be excited about. To watch, to watch my dad, my dad was an alcoholic and went to rehab and, and relapsed all, you know, all these times. And to, to pay attention and to be aware of that right now, baby, you and I, listen, we're overcoming and we're beating this thing that's been trying to take our family out, that's been trying to stop the call of God in our lives, that's been trying to stop the legacy. Listen, and the beautiful thing is, is when my son is born, guess what he's only going to know? That his daddy loves his mama, that his mama loves his daddy, and there ain't nothing in the world that's going to separate us from each other because of that great love. We are currently overcoming in our lives. But listen, it's a wrestle. It's a wrestle. We have to constantly revisit and constantly be aware and constantly understand where we are in the journey. You can't just snap your fingers all the time and overcome. Listen, tonight I want to encourage you, if you're in the process of overcoming, come on, don't give up. Keep going. Keep overcoming. Get it in your mind. Get it in your brain. Get it in your spirit that the reason that I've been put on this earth is to overcome. Amen? Is this good? I mentioned it that I got a little little buddy on the way, which was really cool. I was really excited when I found out that he's a boy. I think I think inside of every man, there's like oh, like firstborn son. Like wow, I, I, we don't know what to name him yet. So if you guys got any cool names, you know, DM me or whatever. I don't know. <laughs> Sterling Junior. Yeah, <laughs> little Michael. <laughs> but can I tell you the way that I'm seeing my wife's and I's journey is starting to change and starting to alter. 
Because there will be a time very, very soon where it's no longer just her story and my story. Now it's also his story. And thinking about the things that I've overcome in my life, what God has delivered me from, the, from the pit that he brought me out on, from the things that he has redeemed me from, great, that's good. I'm going to always honor and respect and remember and revere those things. But as a soon-to-be father, I have to understand that there are currently things in my world that if I don't take charge and I don't make the decision to actively engage and overcome, then my son will be affected. Listen, he'll either be affected by my ability to overcome or my ability to be on the sideline. And I get to choose the version of his life that he lives. I'm going to choose overcoming every time. Tell it, sister. I'm preaching fast tonight because I believe that the Holy Spirit wants to minister to people. I believe he wants to remind you of, of where he's helped you overcome, the things that he's delivered you from, the things that you've walked through. I believe tonight that he, helps, he wants to help you see what is the thing right now that I'm currently engaged in, what's right in front of me, what am I in the thick of right now? Because I believe this about the Holy Spirit. He will bring supernatural stamina and energy to your fight. He will bring supernatural stamina and endurance to what you're facing right now because your family and your future, listen, it, it matters to God. I can imagine God being in heaven like, son, if you would just understand that you're meant to be an overcomer, why are you playing the victim card? Why are you playing, oh, it's just been hard for me, and this is just how it's been, and my family's just been like this forever? No, make a decision, make a stand. In my life and in my family, I will overcome. It's a decision that you have to make. It's something you have to say yes to. And what's so interesting is you look through all of Scripture, all of Scripture, overcomers, left and right. Moses did, couldn't talk, terrible with words, overcomer. King David, small but mighty, overcomer. Joshua was, took over a, a, a group of people that he didn't know how to lead, but guess what? He overcame, left and right. Joseph was accused of raping a woman that he didn't even touch. He overcame. Please read your Bible and get this in inside of you because it's inside of you. Listen, tonight is what I believe is that it's already inside of you, but it's being activated tonight. Something's being turned on. Power is coming to it tonight. Okay, number three, what I will overcome. This is looking into the future. Where God is taking me will require me to have the mind of an overcomer to say yes to the challenge before I'm even there. The Bible says this, it says, though we walk in the flesh, we do not war according to the flesh. So for the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty in God for pulling down strongholds, casting down arguments, and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, bringing every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ and being ready to punish all disobedience when your obedience is fulfilled. You've got to become an overcomer in your mind before you can be an overcomer in your world. Thinking will not help you overcome, but action will. Joyce Meyer says this. She's awesome. She's old school. I don't know, anybody listen to Joyce Meyer? All right, busted. Gotcha. She says this. That everyone wants to be an overcomer, but nobody wants something to overcome. I wonder tonight as we're looking back on the things that we've overcome, as we're realizing the things that we're meant to overcome right here and now, I wonder how it would look if we look to the future of the things we've yet to overcome, but we know are coming our way. I'm here tonight to prophesy that where you go as a region, where you go as a church, you will need to overcome things that you've never faced before. You will need to learn to subdue things that you've never subdued before. As you expand into Santee, as you get new buildings, as this campus grows, it's going to take you to a new level of overcoming in your world because of where God wants to get you. To take your business to the next level. Come on, overcomers. To take your family line to the next level. Come on, overcomers. To take your mental health, your spiritual health, your physical health to the next level. Come on, overcomers. Tonight I believe that, that God is calling you to step into your true and full potential of a believer. Your true and full potential as his son or as his daughter. Come on, the DNA is inside of you. It's just a matter of how much am I willing to engage in the act of overcoming Come on, to take your marriage to the next level. You've got to overcome some things. You've got to overcome my pride. You've got to overcome the need to be right. I've got to beat that it's me versus her. No, no, it's us together. Come on, in your marriage, God is calling you to new levels, new levels of overcoming in your world. The upward call of the believer is to overcome. And so tonight, I want to ask, is your answer yes to whatever God is calling you to overcome? And here's what I believe. If everyone can stand up, this is perfect timing. 
I'm going to open up the, the altar here in a second. I'm not going to tell you why. I'm just going to ask that you would come. God is in the habit of getting us to the place of uncertainty because he wants to understand, he wants to know that we believe in a certain God even though the things that we're facing are uncertain. And I have to tell you, there's a great security. There's a great security that comes when you reach that level of trust, you reach that level of security, you reach that level of, listen, there's nothing in my life that can come in front of me that I'm not ready and willing and filled with to overcome because I serve a God whose main goal is to show me, son, you're meant to be an overcomer in the earth. And so tonight, maybe you're thinking about the things, and listen, you know, you know, the things that are out there that you may not be actively engaging right now, but as you look at the future of your family, as you look at the future of your business, as you look at the future of your marriage, as you look at the future of your friendship, as you look at the future of your city, you know, you know that there's something that you need to go to battle with. You know that there's something that you need to defeat. You know that there's something that you need to put in the ground. There is something that you and I need to overcome. And guess what? The reward of the overcomer is another thing to overcome. But listen, that's how the kingdom is built. From glory to glory, from thing to thing, from victory to victory, from here to there. And so tonight I want to do this. I want to open up the altar. I've got 12 minutes to pray, which is just enough time. And here's what I believe is that tonight as you come down to the altar that you're gonna have a moment with the Holy Spirit that's gonna touch one of those three things, maybe two out of three, maybe all three of those things you need to be ministered to tonight. God, I've gotten too comfortable and I'm not grateful and I don't remember the things that you've pulled me out of. Come on, some of us, it's good to remember where we've been. We don't need to stay there very long, but we need to remember where has God brought you from? What are the battles that he's fought on your behalf that you have overcome? Tonight, maybe you're in the middle of something. Man, I'm overcoming this thing in my family. I'm overcoming this thing in my lineage. I'm overcoming this thing in generation. I'm overcoming right now. I'm in the middle of it, but I'm feeling tired. Guess what? The Holy Spirit has strength for you. He has endurance for you. He has refreshing for you. Or tonight, you're saying, you know what? No matter what comes my way, no matter what comes against me, no matter what crosses my path, listen, maybe you've been experiencing fear and uncertainty and anxiousness about whatever that thing is. Listen, tonight is the night to flip the script, to flip the switch and have a brand new take, a brand new perspective. Thing that's in front of me, I will overcome you in the name of Jesus. As people are coming down, I want to do this. Something that's so beautiful about following Jesus is that this is what this whole thing is meant to be like. We're just meant to follow him, do what he did, be like him as much as we can. But tonight, if you're in the room and you've yet to make that decision, you've yet to put Jesus in his rightful place as king of your life, the savior of the world, the king of kings, the Lord of lords. Tonight, if you're ready and you're willing, the Bible says this. It makes it very simple. The Bible is not complicated, It says this, that if you believe in your heart and confess with your mouth that Jesus is the Savior of the world, that you will be saved. And so tonight, if you're here in this room and you've yet to cross that line, you've yet to raise your hand, you've yet to pray that prayer, your world has not been shaken and shook like I know it's about to be. Tonight, I can't ask you to do anything as far as the belief goes. Only you know what's going on. Only you know what you feel. Only you know what you're thinking right here, right now. And if you're in the room and you're that person saying, yeah, I'm ready to believe and I'm ready to confess the person of Jesus, listen, I'm gonna step into being an overcomer. I'm gonna accept the power of the Holy Spirit. I'm gonna believe that the best days of my life are ahead. Come on, if you're in this room right now and you're believing in your heart, I'm gonna ask you to raise your hand. We're gonna pray together. That's the confess it out loud part. With every head bowed and eyes closed, If you're in the room tonight and for the very first time, you're willing to say yes to the person of Jesus, or maybe you're here, You're like, you know what? This overcoming thing has been beating me down. It's been wearing me out. I'm just not sure anymore. But tonight, you want to get certain again. Come on, Jesus is who he says he is, and he does what he says he does. Come on, his character has been tried, tested, and found to be true. And tonight, if you're willing to put your hope in him for the first time or for the thousandth time, it doesn't matter. You know what's going on in your heart. I want you to raise your hand right now. Raise your hand right now. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Yep. It's really bright, but I see that hand. Beautiful, beautiful. Yes, thank you, Lord. Good, good, good. Yes, beautiful, sir. Fantastic. Fantastic. Come on, that makes God happy. Come on, God's God's only motive 
is he wants you to love him the way that he loves you. He wants you to know him the way that he knows you. He just wants your heart. He wants to show you what it's like to be his son. He wants to show you what it's like to be his daughter. Come on, there's no better life to live than a son or a daughter of the most high. Okay, the hands have been raised. Now the prayer is gonna be prayed. We're gonna pray it together as a family. Come on, El Cajon. I know you're gonna show up strong. You're gonna repeat after me, especially those who raise their hands. Come on, this is a moment in time, a milestone in your faith. Repeat these words after me. Say tonight, March the 15th. At 7.43 p.m., I declare, my forever has changed. I open my heart to the person of Jesus and all that he accomplished on my behalf, a true overcomer. And tonight I step into what I'm always meant to be as a son and a daughter of God. From this moment forward, heaven is my home. God is my father. Jesus is my savior, and I am an overcomer. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. Come on, let's applaud our God. Let's applaud these people making this decision. Okay, here's where, here's where it gets really good. Here's where it gets really good. All you guys down here, good job. I know there's a few more people who are going to come down. Tonight, if you're if you're here tonight and you just want to express gratitude again, you just want to express thankfulness again, listen, God's not trying to bring up your past to weigh you down. He's trying to bring up your past so you're reminded of how far he's brought you. He's going to remind you of how good he is. He's going to remind you of how great he's been in your life. If you're here tonight and you want the Holy Spirit to just remind you, God, show me. God, give me, give me brand new gratitude. God, give me brand new appreciation for you. God, the things that we've overcome together. Come on, I couldn't have done it without you. Come on, God loves when we get desperate for him. His favorite thing to hear is, God, I couldn't have done it without you. Tonight, if that's you, I just want you to lift your hands as we pray. God, I thank you right now. God, for the great story of the overcomer. God, I thank you that you set the example with your son. God, you sent him to earth to overcome sin, to overcome death. God, to overcome every temptation that a man could face. God, we thank you tonight and we reflect. Holy Spirit, help us remind. Help us be reminded tonight, God, of where we have overcome, the things that we have gone to war against. God, and we can not have done it without you. God, we acknowledge your power in our life. God, we acknowledge your hand in our life. God, we say again, great and mighty overcomer, thank you. Thank you, thank you. Come on, applaud the Lord if he's overcome in your life. Come on, he's a great overcomer. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Maybe you're here tonight and you're in the thick of it. Come on, I'm in the thick of it. I need his power. I need his grace. I need his strength. I need his supernatural wisdom in my life. Come on, who you become only depends on what you're willing to overcome. Come on, raise your hand tonight. If you're in the middle of it, you're the thick of it. God, I thank you right now for a brand new, fresh anointing to overcome. It's a mantle of overcoming. God, I thank you that in every single hand raised right now, God, you know the scenario, you know the situation, you know the circumstance, you know the battle. God, you know the thing that they are up against. And so right now I call down from heaven, God, supernatural victory, supernatural ability to overcome, supernatural ability to trample on the things of the enemy, supernatural ability to overcome addiction. Oh, come on, people in this room right now, you need to be the breaker of addiction in your family line. You need to be the one who sets the mark, who sets the pace, who draws the line. God, we thank you for the supernatural ability to do what we cannot. God, we thank you that when we look to you, God, in the thick of it, in the middle of it, while it is hurting, God, we thank you that you show up every single time. You're right there with us. You're right there with us. You're right there with us. God, we thank you that you've crafted us to overcome, crafted us to overcome, crafted us to overcome. I actually feel... Um, I feel like we're meant to pray in the spirit. Just pray in the spirit with me for 30 seconds. I don't know how much longer, but there's power in praying and believing that the Holy Spirit, what he's able to say, what he's able to do, come on, we'll break chains. Come on, we'll break addiction. We'll break generational curses. Just pray with me. Come on, if you've got your heavenly language in here. Come on, maybe you need it tonight. Maybe that's the thing that you need. You need to step into new realms. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Kid. Overcomers. Great overcomers. Great overcomers. 
I want to prophesy over our youth. Where are all of our youth at? Come on, make some noise. Okay. God is setting the youth of this nation apart to be overcomers, to fight battles that have never been fought, to take territory that has never been taken, to establish the name of Jesus where it is yet to be heard. God, I thank you for the next generation in our church and in this world. God, I thank you that they will carry the torch of the overcomer. God, I thank you that they will look to their parents and to their grandparents as a legacy of those who overcame. Come on, parents. It's time to start writing a legacy that your kids can follow. It's time to start living a life that inspires them. It's time to start over are coming things so that they don't have to God we thank you for your people and then we're going to pray together everyone's going to lift their hand for this one because where God wants to take this region where God wants to take this church listen it's not going to just take the Hunleys being willing to overcome it's not just going to take the Shooties being willing to overcome it's not going to just take the Wyatts being willing to overcome it's not just going to take the Batty Youngs being willing to overcome it's going to take every single person in this building willing to fight the battle willing to step out willing to overcome come on so if you're willing to overcome listen before you even know what it is God would say, don't you trust who I am, the great and mighty, the alpha, the alpha and the omega, the creator of all? Don't you think I can bring energy? Don't you think I can bring power? Don't you think I can bring strategy? I want us to lift our hands all over the room. God, I thank you for the El Cajon campus. Come on, mighty men and women of God. God, I thank you as this region expands and as it multiplies. God, let there be a great testimony of overcoming. Listen, if you, over, if you see something out in your future that you need to overcome, listen, put your mouth guard in. Put your black eye ink on and go to war. God, we thank you right now that every battle that we set field on, we will emerge victorious. God, we thank you that every building that is meant to be ours is released in the name of Jesus right now. God, I release funding. God, I release resources. And here's what I do. I call out the next wave of leaders. I call out the next disciplers. I call out the next pastors. I call out the next ministry leaders. God, I thank you that a mighty stirring is happening in this region to overcome. And God, here's what we do. We say everything that comes from this moment. God, every life saved, every disciple made, Every area impacted and touched. Come on, would you agree with me that he gets the credit? Come on, he gets the glory. He gets the honor. He gets the praise. Come on, El Cajon. Can we praise our God? Can we praise our King? In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Wow, what an amazing word. I hope you enjoyed that as much as I did. Hey, listen, for more information about our church, go to www.awakenchurch.com. Or subscribe to our YouTube channel if you haven't already and download our app. It is amazing. It is chock full of incredible messages, information about upcoming events, and you can even support our ministry if you feel so inclined. We loved having you with us today. We look forward to seeing you again. God bless you. Live a life that is transformative. Bye for now. Bye for now.